So if you've followed me for long enough or know me personally, then you'd know I'm a big fan of roguelikes. Games like The Binding of Isaac, Nuclear Throne, and Sulphur have really shaped me in terms of the way I design games. And I've tried to make roguelikes in the past and failed, but I'm pretty determined this time. Hey everyone, I'm Jake, and this is Jake Makes Game, Roguelike Edition. So, I've decided to make a roguelike, but before I could start, I had to determine what a roguelike is and what it means to me. So I put some rules into place that I need to follow when designing and making this game. It needs to have randomly generated levels, items and weapons that vary from run to run, and permadeath. Some other mechanics I'd like to incorporate would be some sort of inventory system, and a potential way to extract from runs, and if you do so successfully, you take the found loot with you to make you more stronger for the next run, so I guess it makes it more of a road light, but either way, I'm really excited to get into it. The first thing I did was set up a bare bones player controller that could move around, dash and shoot, as well as some enemies to kill and be killed by. This was a fairly quick implementation and it definitely can be improved on, but I wanted to get stuck into the procedural generation aspect. Now, I've done a few different ways of procedurally generating levels before including a more linear dungeon structure, like that found in The Binding of Isaac, as well as the walker method used in Nuclear Throne. But I feel like both of those implementations just won't really work for what I have in mind. So I decided to go for more of an approach similar to the one found in Enter the Gungeon. I wanted to make this system as flexible as possible, and I wanted to structure it in a way that would give Future Jake a much easier time with creating levels. So I decided to create a node-based, procedurally generated level editor. And the first step was actually figuring out how to do that. I started off by reading through a bunch of documentation and then slowly figured out how to create an editor window as well as draw some nodes on that window. It was at this point that I realised that I may be way in over my head with how complicated this was actually going to be, but after countless hours of work I had a bit more of a node graph editor together. You could create new nodes and select what room type they would be, as well as be able to drag them around and connect the nodes to each other. The next thing to do was make sure that you couldn't connect rooms to those that they were already connected to, as well as locking the room selection once it was connected. Once that functionality was in, I got started on making sure that you could delete rooms and connections from the editor in case you wanted to make some changes to the level's layout. Obviously a lot more has gone into this than what I've shown here, but I thought I'd keep it fairly simple for the devlog as I didn't want it to be too tech heavy. And now with the editor at a point where I could actually start doing something with it, I started using tile maps to create rooms and corridors. I used tile maps to block out a medium sized room, which had at least one doorway on each side that would lead out to a potential corridor. Once that was sorted, on separate tile map layers, I added all of the room's collision, shown in purple, enemy paths, shown in green, as well as the spot the minimap would render, shown in white and blue. This was a pretty straightforward process, but I've given myself some constraints to follow when creating rooms to allow for the generator to easily connect rooms and corridors together. And if I set up a solid foundation now for it, it'll hopefully save me some time later in development. After creating a few room types using this method, I got stuck into the level generation code. This is really where things started to ramp up in terms of the amount of code written, as well as the difficulty of what I was actually doing. I created a room template scriptable object, which held data about that room, like where the doorways were, what corresponding node in the level editor it would be, as well as where enemies and chests would spawn. Once the basics of that scriptable object code were complete, I could then go through and create a bunch of scriptables to use for the next step, which was to actually instantiate and place rooms and corridors, taking into consideration the level editor data. At this point, I was about 2,000 lines of code deep, which was the level editor and generator combined, and the finish line was nowhere in sight. I really wanted to continue, but I didn't want to burn myself out. So I found myself at a crossroads. Do I spend the next 7 to 12 business years developing this tool and generator, or do I turn to the asset store and use one from there? And that's when I stumbled across Edgar Pro, which, as it turns out, does everything that I was trying to accomplish. So I cut the middleman out and installed that into the project. I started off by quickly reading through the documentation and then followed along with a tutorial I found on YouTube. And within 15 minutes, I had it all up and running. Although I've only scratched the surface with what this asset can actually do, this has definitely boosted my motivation with the project. I quickly got the camera following the player, and just like that, the generator was somewhat playable. Obviously, this is just the very start of getting it playable, but I'm really happy with the progress I've made so far. But that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.